Well, we were talking about Chase Young last week and his injury and discussing when we think that Chase Young will come back. Of course, he was signed to the physically unable to perform list, which means that he is automatically out for the first four games of the season. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that he's only going to be out for the first four games of the season. And in fact, there are many people who are now thinking that Chase Young may not come back until November and who knows he may not even play in the 23 season or not until the 23 season of course I think that is probably being a little bit too extreme I do expect Chase Young to play this season but I think it's going to be a little bit longer of a wait before that we actually see Chase Young so I I stumbled across this article uh, from the Commander's Wire, is Chase Young's injury combo a rare thing? And I thought this was really interesting. Um, and it may explain some some things as far as Chase Young's season that he was having, you know, quite frankly, before the injury. Um, so if we read into this article... Um, you know, Kevin Sheehan uh, had the guest doctor, uh, Jesse Morris, um, who discussed Young's injury on, of course, you know, Sheehan's podcast. You can check that out online. Uh, Morris, uh, who's a board-certified sports and family medicine f- uh, physician in Miami, is a cell therapy specialist at the Os- uh, Osteopathic Center. He follows sports and is known as the fantasy doc. And has professionally helped many athletes. Here are some expert, uh, or excerpts, uh, I should say. Um, Still waking up. I'm always going to blame it on that. Uh, From Dr. Morris regarding his opinion on the Chase Young injury. And, of course, uh, he says, even a patellar tendon rupture is isolation. In itself, uh, isolation is a rough injury. Uh, Combining that with an ACL is a big deal. Big, big deal. Now, I don't think I have ever heard of this combo together. I don't know how he would even do it. It is a very strange combo. The patellar tendon is the tendon that attaches the kneecap to your shin. Essentially, it pulls down on the shin anytime you want to walk or anything like that. It is a weird combination of tearing that and the ACL at the same time. Traditionally, the ACL is going to be the minimum of 9 months up to 12 months of rehab without any setbacks. The problem with an ACL tear by itself is you pretty much need to get started on rehab pretty quickly. But with the patellar tendon... You need four to six weeks of allowing it to heal before you can even start pushing it. You can't do both at the same time because that would obviously counteract with what you're trying to do. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't come back until November. Given his stature, how important he is to the team, his position, the fact that you don't want to bring him back and say, Hey, are we going to bring you back for 10 plays a game? They want to bring him back and let his motor go. So I think they will bring him back when he is 100% ready. Really trust that knee. Fortify that knee. So is there a possibility he doesn't play in 2022? Yes. It's probably only a 30% chance of that now. Maybe a setback. Maybe the team is not doing the best and they say, you know what? It is probably not worth it to bring him back this year. A just-in-case type of thing. I could see that coming into fruition. When Sheehan expressed Young was not effective prior to the ACL tear and his production was considerably less than his rookie season, he asked Dr. Morris, was it possible he was playing injured? Definitely. I will tell you, I see all different positions. Linemen, quarterbacks, wide receivers, everything. I would say we probably know about 20% of their injuries from the media. Even then, whenever I ask them, what is bothering you today? 
They could answer 10 things, but it's only the thing that is bothering them the most that they express. They all have crazy injuries. Most of them, most of the time, they function through them, they push through them. Could it be something that was changing his mechanics that was causing him to not have the same level of explosiveness? Could he have had a partial injury to that patellar tendon? Very much so. It's very common, actually. If you throw an ultrasound on it, you can see it in a minute. A lot of guys just push through it and hope it gets better because they are used to everything getting better, right? They are genetic freaks. They are used to being the best of the best. But unfortunately, ligaments and tendons don't heal and they learn the hard way. So that is something that I was pondering uh, on and thinking to myself that, yeah, I mean, Chase Young was not having his best season in 2021. We were seeing this, right? And because of that, um, I started to think, you know, he was not having his best season. Could he have been injured with something else prior to this ACL? I actually didn't know that he had tore his patellar tendon along with his ACL. I thought it was just an ACL. I mean, it shows you how much I know, right? So for him to have both of these combo injuries, this is a huge deal. And this explains a lot of why that Chase Young was not having the best season that he could have had prior to this ACL tear. Now, would you say that the patellar tendon injury led to the ACL? Who knows? I mean, there could be speculation on that all day long. Uh, I would just say that um, I really don't think that we're going to see Chase Young for the majority of the season now. You know, having read this article, I think that if, in fact, the Commanders are not having a good season, then you won't see Chase Young at all. Maybe, and then I'll even go further to say this, if the Commanders are having a decent season and they're kind of teeter-tottering on maybe backing into the playoffs and somehow getting into the playoffs, then you may see Chase Young being saved for the playoffs. Yes, he's probably going to be rusty, sure, but you want him to be 100%. I would much rather sacrifice a season for Chase Young and not have him this year and him coming in I'd rather than him coming in and being 60% and possibly getting injured yet again as opposed to just saving him for next season, him in 100%, you know, hopefully no chance of injury on that leg, on that knee, and being the explosive Chase Young that he was in 2020. Uh, I, I would rather see that, honestly. And I think most of us would. Um, if we do care about these these players as men, then you know that's what you want to see. You, you want to see these guys. You want to see these guys healthy, and you want to see these guys at their best. And you don't want to see them on the field just to be on the field. Um, yes, it could be a, a morale boost, but if they're struggling, then it's just going to be bad all around. And then you can risk them getting injured. I keep going back to RG3. You know, I don't think RG3 should have been on the field at all in that 2013 season, um, at least not until maybe halfway through. And he should have probably stuck with the game plan that Mike Shanahan and company had had for him, um, developing him in 2012. But, you know, that is a totally different video and moot point at this point, right? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, Chase Young. Uh, probably going to be out for much longer than we anticipated. Um, but hey, you know, let's, let's continue to hope that he continues to heal. We want him to be a beast once he is back 100% because he's really going to need to boost that defense up. And that being said, 
continue to support this channel, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so you'll never miss another video release, and also support this channel this way. Seem to get out.